Good morning everyone. Today's lecture topic is occlusion in fixed partial denture. I am Dr. Priyanka. So by the end of the lecture you will be able to understand and outline and discuss the four types of interferences, discuss non-working interference, discuss the signs and sim symptoms of pathogenic occlusion, uh, categorize the management of pathogenic occlusion. So these are also known as the learning outcomes. Coming to the introduction, so basically prosthodontics revolves around occlusion and it's one of the major topics in prosthodontics. So I'll try and simplify it as much as I can and you can read through the slides as well. So occlusion actually means closing. So there are two types of occlusion which is mentioned here. That is static occlusion and dynamic occlusion. So static occlusion means when the jaws are closed and teeth are in contact. And uh, dynamic occlusion is as it happens momentarily while mandible moves. So not all the states of occlusion are correct. We will be discussing that in detail in the next coming slides. So occlusion can be defined as the act or process of closure or being closed or shut off. Also the static relationship between incising or masticating surfaces of maxillary and mandibular teeth. So again, you can uh, uh, hear a note is so when you con when there is a contact of the maxillary and mandibular teeth in functional movements, the relationship that should not be traumatic to the supporting structures or the arch. So everything in short has to be in harmony and balance. Uh, okay, so coming to this, uh, you can see this photo. Uh, all the red dots indicate the contact of opposing teeth. So it is basically a photo of static occlusion. So uh, whenever we give a denture to the patient or we give uh, a fixed prosthesis to the patient and we put articulating paper and if we put it in the whole arch and we tell the patient to bite, he, you will be able to appreciate all these even contacts everywhere. So these are not high points. This is just the sign of contact, proper contact of the opposing. Okay, now coming to very important three terms which has to be remembered and uh, memorized, the definitions. So, centric relation, also known as CR in short. Uh, so, in short, if you talk about centric relation, it is the most retruded position of the mandible. If I want to simplify that. Okay, so, okay, we can read the definition as well. So that is the maxillo-mandibular relationship in which the condyles articulate with the thinnest avascular portion of their respective disc with the complex in the anterior superior position against the shapes of the articular eminences. Okay, so the position is independent of con tooth contact. This position is clinically uh, determined by the mandible as it's directed superiorly and anteriorly. Also, it is purely a rotationary moment. Uh, so this is a definition by the GPT. Uh, coming to the next definition, that is the maximum intercuspal position, MI, MIC or MIP. It's referred to these short forms at many places. So in short, that is the maximal teeth to teeth contact which we see so the definition says complete intercuspation of the opposing teeth independent of condylar position also referred to as the best fit of the teeth regardless of the condylar position okay so it's the maximum contact the intercuspation okay coming to the third definition that is a centric occlusion also referred to as CO the occlusion of opposing teeth when the mandible is in a centric relation okay so occlusion when the mandible is in a centric relation it 
has to be same as the MIC. So that is how uh, uh, centric occlusion is. So relationship is a state and centric occlusion is occlusion at the centric relation. Okay, so now there are some important points to remember. Um, in natural dentition, MI need not co coincide with the CR, okay? So the maximum intercuspal uh, relation does not have to coincide with the centric relation in a natural teeth. However, in RPD or FPD with existing natural teeth, there can be two situations. So there can be two situations. When sufficient teeth are in contact, um, there can be a MI which is equal or unequal to the CR. Okay, so MI and CRs, everything revolves about, around these two topics, these two definitions. So when there is insufficient occlusal contact existing in the um, previous occlusion, then the maximum intercuspation is equal to the centric relation okay so in rpd and fpd that's what we observe in a cd case that is a complete denture case um mi is given at uh, cr so we give the intercuspation at the centric relation and that's why we take the centric relation okay so that is what it says here okay so you can just read through this so I explained to you in short. Coming to these photographs, uh, slide A is showing the MIC or MIP or MI. Um, here on the right side is the CR. So you can appreciate in this slide that uh, you can see the both the relations are falling in a different plane. Um, the MIP and CR don't have to be same all the time in one patient. Coming to the next slide, so uh, talking about the biologic or physiologic occlusion, which is defined as the functional, um, which is defined as a functional equilibrium, which exists between all the tissues of masticatory system. So that means there there is an opposing force which is balanced together. Okay, so there has to be a state of equilibrium and also the factors are in balance okay so all the stresses all the resistance are in balance and all the environmental factors are in balance in this occlusion you can see it in the photo below in an ideal occlusion uh, so this is an occlusion in which maximum intercuspal contacts are there in which it provides efficient mastication and aesthetics okay so in short that is what it is so in ideal occlusion mastication and aesthetics have to be uh, balanced out okay and has to have a maxillary i'm uh, sorry maximum intercuspal contacts between the upper and the lower arch okay so cer certain characteristics are there in this so these characters are um, are it has to have a stable posterior contact. Uh, the MIP uh, coincides with the CR. Um, and uh, no posterior contact in eccentric mandibular movements. So we'll be discussing that later, the, the working and the non-working sides. Then there is contact in the anterior teeth and harmony with the jaw movements. Okay, And the occlusion should be in angles class 1. So those were the ideal occlusion. So now the importance of ideal occlusion. So um, it can be used in diagnostic CAS examinations. Okay, as stated in this one. Um, it can be used in correcting the TMDs and occlusion interferences if they exist before any of the restorative procedures for final prosthetic rehabilitation. So in the final stages, okay? Coming to optimum occlusion. 
uh, so um, in an ideal occlusal uh, arrangement the load exerted uh, should be distributed optimally okay so occlusal contact has been shown to influence muscle activity during mastication so there are a few effects which we will i will just talk about there is a direct effect so in short any high points in a restoration or occlusion hampers the muscles of mastication we should not have any high points which affects any of the muscles so uh, the horizontal forces should be minimized and avoided so we should have a proper centric relation and we should have a proper cusp and fossa relations okay and uh, so there should be a proper cusp to cusp contact a chewing and grinding is enhanced and that's how sorry that's how the chewing and grinding will be enhanced and uh, this is best achieved by giving mutually protected occlusion that is this uh, occlusion scheme which we will be discussing later. okay so concept of occlusion there are three concepts that is the bilateral balanced occlusion unilateral balanced occlusion and mutually protected occlusion coming to the balanced occlusion so here all teeth are in bilateral contact in anterior and posterior occlusal areas in centric and eccentric positions okay so that is what the definition says all the sides both the jaws the anterior and the posterior teeth have to be in contact in any position okay so in natural teeth the balancing side contacts are in inappropriate okay so balancing side is the one which we move the jaw towards so um, and potentially harmful as they constitute so so if balancing side contacts are inappropriate they lead to premature contacts and that might create problem with the PDL the TMJ disturbances and occlusal wear okay so coming to the canine protected occlusion and mutually protected occlusion so according to GPD uh, sorry JPD uh, 2017 it's defined as the mutually protected occlusion is defined as occlusion scheme in which the posterior teeth prevent excursive uh, sorry ex excursive uh, contact of um, anterior teeth in maximal intercuspal position and anterior teeth disengage the posterior teeth in the mandible excursive movements so uh, when the posterior teeth prevents any excessive uh, contact of the anterior teeth when it's properly into an intercuspal position and when the anterior teeth disengage the posterior teeth in any of the side to side lateral or eccentric movements that is what is known as the mutually protected occlusion uh, now coming to the GPT definition of canine protected occlusion so this is mutually protected occlusion in which vertical and horizontal overlap of the canine teeth disengage the posterior teeth in excursive movements of the mandible so when we move the teeth side to side and that is from uh, that is um, if the canine guides our um, movement then you can see that if the canine is only the one touching then you can see and appreciate that it is a canine protected occlusion okay coming to the next slide that is the features of mutually protected occlusion uh, so there are certain features okay so that you have to have a uniform contact between all the teeth there should be stable posterior tooth contact in all with all the forces centric relation should coincide with the mi no contact with posterior teeth in any lateral or protrusive movements anterior teeth contact in normal relation um, 
yeah and then uh, these are the criterias for the same uh, they would only be contact in harmonious uh, relationship in a full a full complement of teeth exist if the whole te teeth of set uh, teeth set is present the supporting tissues are healthy there is no crossfire and in angles okay uh, so this slide basically says uh, so anterior and posterior teeth should be in occlusion the posterior teeth have stops okay have stops and uh, when the maximum intercuspal position happens so these serve as stops okay so disadvantage of that is if it was not there it would weaken the periodontal ligament of the anterior teeth it is also not there in case of missing canines class 2 and class 3 situations and crosswise situations okay uh, okay so now coming to the working side and the non-working side so basically the working side is where the mandible moves okay non-working side is the opposite side okay so the canine guided working movement the premolar and the molar on the working side become separated as the mandible moves away from the centric occlusion and in non-working side uh, it becomes separated as the mandible moves away from the centric occlusion so working side is the side where the movement occurs okay and the opposite side is the non-working side okay coming to the unilateral balance occlusion that is also known as the group function okay so here uh, the exclusive co contact means moving away from the MIP position which occurs on the working side okay so that's basically the definition so the definition says multiple contact relations between maxillary and mandibular teeth in lateral movements on the working side whereas simultaneous contact on several teeth act as a group to distribute occlusal forces so when a group of teeth function together it is known as a group function okay so on the non-working side no contact happens till the centric relation in the mandible okay and uh, uh, there should be a normal intercuspal relationship okay so that's what the slide says you can also read the slide okay so uh, the load the occlusal load is equally distributed in the pdl of the teeth on working side so uh, so advantageous if for instance the pdl support of the canine is compromised so why on the working side occlusal road load on excursion happens on the non-working side the posterior posterior teeth do not contact okay so on the working side there is a occlusal load force because we are doing the excursive movement and on the non-working side the posterior teeth has no contact so that is how the working and non-working uh, side works okay coming to long centric or freedom of centric that's what it's known as so in short what it is is to close in between to occlude in between the centric relation and centric occlusion is known as a long centric so that is freedom of centric okay it's not freedom in centric okay so coming to the definition when centric relation and centric occlusion do not coincide a, a freedom is given to close the mandible either into centric relation or slightly anterior to its centric occlusion with a smooth gliding without affecting and change in vertical dimension of occlusion okay so this uh, concept has evolved and finally known as the long centric okay because of the freedom of movement few important points to remember is long centric involves the primarily the anterior teeth and long centric refers to freedom from centric not in centric okay coming to the occlusal interferences 
Uh, so these are the undesirable occlusal contacts which occur and it may lead to pathologic occlusion. Okay. So it has to be assessed, corrected with the help of uh, mounting the diagnostic cast before prosthetic rehab procedure. And uh, then we can, you know, uh, okay. So response to occlusion interferences, there can be a lot of characteristics that is toothache, tooth tender on biting tooth or uh, spastic um, masticatory muscle, which is also known as uh, HMS, that is hemi-masticatory -ma spasm, which is a rare movement disorder of the muscle. Okay, that can also happen Mus muscle tension, headache, condyle dis derangements, degenerative arthritic changes in the TMJ. Okay, coming to four type of interferences, which are centric interference, working interference, non-working interference, and protrusive uh, interference. So we will be looking at centric first. So centric interference is when mandible closes in certain way. If in case the force is prematurely contacted. So in the case of premature contacts, uh, the mandible will close in a certain way. Okay, so there should be no premature contacts or interferences which exist. That's when, if they exist, that's when centric interference happens. Working interference. So contact of maxillary mandibular teeth on working side occurs when anterior disoccludes, okay? So when anterior disoccludes, you can see that there is a contact point which is established, okay? That is known as a working interference. This should ideally not contact. Non-working side interferences. So that contact between maxillary and mandibular teeth and lateral excursions okay so you can see that um, in the photograph this is the working side and this is the not working side so when the mandib mandible moves to the left side this region becomes the working side and the opposing becomes the non-working side and ideally none should be in contact right if any of these are in contact it becomes uh, interference okay coming to the protrusive interference so uh, when distal of the maxillary posterior teeth contact the mesial inclines of mandibular posterior teeth it leads to pathologic occlusion so these are destructive forces due to maybe closeness of Teeth to muscles, non-axial nature of forces, inability of patients to incise, okay? So when these forces contact tightly, they um, create problems in the tooth structure and the PDL structure, okay? In the protrusive movements. That is what the photo is showing, okay? Again, it can be corrected, assessed with the aid of mounted diagnostic cast before prosthetic rehabilitation. Is started okay coming to pathogenic occlusion pathogenic occlusion is defined as occlusion relationship capable of producing pathologic changes in the stomatognathic system okay um, so that means if it produces uh, problems and our our whole system the the tmj the muscles and the teeth everything is affected then it will be a pathogenic occlusion in such occlusions sufficient disharmony exists between the teeth and the tmj to result in symptom that involves intervention so you understand if we are creating problem in our whole system the stomatognathic system then there has to be a pathogenic occlusion which needs corrected so there are certain signs and symptoms so in the teeth there can be mobility open contact any abnormal wear fracture chipping off in the periodontium there can be chronic periodontal disease widening of the pdl and any tooth movement compromised uh, crown to root ratios widening of the pdl okay so coming to the tfo tfo is the trauma from occlusion 
so it is an injury to the pdl from the occlusal forces basically that's what it means so it leads to mobility and also uh, it is a tendon and percussion okay so you can see that there is winding of the pdl here okay and so on the musculature there can be chronic fatigue spasm pain restricted movement trismus and myositis okay and in tmj there can be pain clicking popping of the tmj okay coming to the pathogenic occlusion treatments okay so in short it can be divided into short term and definitive treatments in short term basically we give occlusal splints in long term we basically give orthodontic treatment okay so we'll just read through this so in short term you give an occlusal splint or device um so it to, it, it is used to serve to deprogram the occlusion, such as that of future restoration and centrifugation, and is easily accomplished. It acts as a diagnostic tool in determining if the proposed change of occlusal scheme will be tolerated by the patient, and it can relieve the myofacial pain. Okay, in definitive treatment, the orthodontic treatment is used to correct the malalignment okay so it can be treated okay any of the replacement of the missing teeth should be done and any of the grinding should be done if required uh, the photo shows an occlusal splint okay in occlusion the short term okay so coming to the examination of occlusion so how do we do that we use an articulating paper uh, and we mark the static con occlusion when the jaw is in a closed or um, when the jaw is closely in contact we will tell the patient we will put the articulating paper on both the sides and one by one and we will tell the patient to do lateral movements um, protrusive movements grinding chewing and swallowing so when the patient does lateral movements or side to side movements you will be able to see a blue mark on the teeth that is the dynamic occlusion so the dynamic occlusion will be marked so the dy dynamic occlusion if, if you remember is the momentary contact during the movement which is done in the lateral excursions however when the patient closes the jaw properly you will be able to see the red marks and those will be denoted by the static occlusion so we'll tell the patient to open and close We use the Miller forcept to hold the articulating paper in place. So one side there is a blue marking and the other side there is a red marking. Okay, so that is what it is in short. Uh, so coming to the points to remember. So there has to be a proper cusp and fossa relationship. The supporting cusp. Uh, in supporting cusp, uh, what has to come in contact is the mandibular buckle and maxillary palatal cusp. So both of these cusp has to have to come in contact in the supporting cusp system. In the non-supporting cusp, that is the guiding cusp, which are not in contact, so that those should be mandibular lingual and maxillary buccal cusp okay so we have to remember that in the fabrication of any of the processes and if we keep these things in mind the supporting cusp and the non-supporting cusp the fabrication can be made better and uh, we can get rid of any of the occlusal interferences which are present okay so thank you so much for patient hearing and uh, you can refer to two textbooks of fixed prosthodontics that is rosensteel and schillenberg and you can find me around and uh, have a word with me if you have questions regarding this topic thank you